Dr. Ariane here from the Movement Paradigm. Today I'm going to talk about asymmetry in the body. So a lot of times we look at the human body and we think on the outside it looks very symmetrical. However, it is in fact very asymmetrical. Uh, a lot of that is due to the organs which are a very calculated way separated from our right and left side of our body. We have our liver, gallbladder on the right. We have our pancreas, spleen, stomach on the left heart towards the left. We have different functions of our hemispheres in our brain. So there's so much asymmetry that goes on in our body, which is so powerful. But now let's talk about some movement asymmetry. So if we think about some of our high level athletes, especially rotational athletes, I tend to work with a lot of golfers, but golfers, tennis players, they are rotational athletes. So in that case, they can become over patterned a certain direction because they are swinging the club, they're rotating in the same plane over and over and over again. So when we think about movement, we ideally want the movement to be fairly symmetrical with the exception of our higher level athletes that do have some type of rotational sport or a sport that they have become over patterned so that they can have a high level of performance. So we don't necessarily wanna take all of that away from them. We want to just try to keep them as healthy and functional as possible, but not necessarily take away the high level of performance that they might have. We know that asymmetry is one of the biggest predictor predictors of non-contact injuries along with previous injury. So it is important that we address asymmetry in movement. Now, let's talk about pain. So a lot of times I have people that come in with right-sided low back pain, left-sided neck pain, you know, whatever it might be. And what I find is, is that they have become over-patterned a certain direction. So to give you an example, if someone is sitting like this at their workstation all day and they have a computer screen here and they have a computer screen to the right, a lot of their day, they're going to be looking to the right and then they're gonna be looking to the left, right? So looking to the right, looking to the left. So if someone's experiencing right-sided neck pain and all day long, they have their mouse on this side, they have their phone on this side, they're writing with the right hand and they have the computer screen to the right, guess why they're having right-sided neck pain? Because they've been over-patterned that direction. Now let's take an example of if I cross my hip, across my legs this direction all the time. Every time I sit down, when I'm at work, you know, any opportunity that I have, I cross my legs in this, this direction. That is going to create some kind of over patterning of the pelvis in this direction. So I could give all of the perfect uh, rehabilitation exercises and manual exercises, but if someone doesn't correct their patterning that they're doing all day long, it will not have the same effect. So my first step in, in recommendation to you is to take a day and assess, truly, truly assess your patterns. So that means how do you sit at work? Where is your computer screen? Are you looking forward or do you have it to the right? Are you turning your body to the left, which also creates a right rotation, for example? How do you drive in the car? Is your right arm up? Is your left arm up? Are you leaning down to one side? So really just trying to take inventory of what happens with your movement patterns, not exercises per se, but just your movement patterns during the course of the day. So you can really begin to identify these asymmetrical, what I call over patterns, meaning it's okay to turn to the right and to the left. You should turn in all planes and you should have lots of variability of movement. It's when you do this for a prolonged period of time is what your body does not prefer. Remember, your, the, human body, excuse me, the human body craves movement. It thrives on it. <laughs> That's how we can you know, really achieve optimal wellness and longevity is, is through movement. I could go on and on, but I'll leave it there. So just remember that the more variability, the more changing in your movement throughout the day, the better. So your body does not get accustomed to those things and really trying to identify these patterns that you might